Upon entering the boundary, Forn found the scene arrangements to be quite interesting. The aesthetic of the restaurant felt somewhat in between the fancy restaurant and Jack's. The tables with stools on one end, booths on the other, it may have felt sort of diner-ish, but it had a hometown feel to it, which Forn liked. Welcome to the boundary, a friendly waitress in a lavender shirt said. I'm Sophie. Can, what can I, wait, are you the Hex Girls? Yeah, we sure are, Forn smiled. Wow, it's so great to meet you. You must be Forn, Sophie exclaimed, and you must be Dusk. Yep, Dusk proudly and nodded, and you're, um, uh, Lorna? No, I mean Luna, Sophie quickly self-corrected. Yep, that's right, Luna said, giving the woman a sheepish smile. Well, there are a lot of choices. We've got anything from enchiladas to spaghetti to general T.O.S. chicken. And, and, but of course, Sophie quickly changed the subject. Foran admittedly felt bad for Luna. Everyone was already forgetting her name. Sure, she was more of a background presence, but she didn't really boost up the crowd energy like her other two. Even as a drummer, Dusk had quite of a large presence hitting the drums with force and was more of looking forward to it. Luna, while she was dedicated to playing her music and expressing in a very shy way that it didn't seem nearly bombastic and exciting as the other two. Regardless, Luna did didn't deserve to be forgotten or ignored. Apparently, Forn and Dusk were becoming well known for their personalities among the other crowd concerts, but it seemed that Luna hadn't been quite rational about the crowds as much. After the delicious lunch, Gus had brought over everyone to Music Row to walk around the nearby parks. They had just walked around Owen Bradley Park, which boasted the center attraction of life-size statue of a man playing on the piano. They currently were walking past the two large guitars on the platform on the way back to the tour van. See those guitars here, girls? Gus pointed out. Those are replicas of Elvis and Roy Obscurve guitars. That's so cool, Orin exclaimed. She looked over at Dusk, who was seemed pretty depressed out of it, and she felt that she should check on her worried friend. Everything okay? I guess. Dusk shrugged apathetically. I just thought about visiting a place would have been more the happiest thing in my life. But I don't feel very happy, you know. Yeah, Foreign simply nodded. I think all of us believed that once we had Bragg, our dream would become true. But it wasn't for Luna. That's okay. Hey, speaking of... We should probably get to the feed here, Bridget pointed out. If we wanted to have time for the calming ritual, that is. Despite that, that Bridget was presenting it as a choice. She knew there wasn't actually one, so all Foreign could do was comply. Good idea, Dusk pointed out. We need to make sure we have time for that, for Luna's sake. Foreign thought it would be sweet how cautious J Dusk was becoming now about Luna's departure from the band. Even though if it really went down about it, if only Dusk knew the actual intention behind the calming ritual. Whoa, this is more of like a skating rink than a concert venue, Dusk observed. The blonde was quite right. The Rocktown building looked more of a, like a small recording studio, while on the outside it looked somewhat of a gymnasium. It was probably the tile floor that gave the aphistic, but still the fact that the stage was on ground level added to the informal look. Well, if you're not wrong, Gus chuckled. The concert venue actually doubles the skate park and the coffee fee bar. It actually was built as a place for teens to hang out and expand into a place for concerts that it was built. Interesting, Forn said, as she was feeling mentally unsure as the word's anxiety level rose. Well, it shouldn't be hard to do a common ritual here, Thus pointed out. We could just sit in the middle of the floor and do it. I thought you didn't believe in common rituals, Dusk, Luna challenged. I don't. But I just don't want to do anything that I can help you, Dusk said. Farm was quite shocked at how invulnerable she was being compared to usual. Dusk was never invulnerable with others, but she thought of the potentially of losing her best friend. It must have got it out. Farm felt a bit of goosebumps bubble up on her skin. The common ritual was about to happen, but she didn't know what to stop it. All right, ready for the ritual? Bridget asked. Seem eager to start. It was obvious to Forn as to why. Yeah, I think I'm ready. What do we do again? Luna inquired. Let's all sit down on our floor, place our palms face down. Nia guide. Forn suddenly felt a disturbing thought. 
Was Dusk wearing the necklace? A glance at the blonde's direction really caused Foran's heart to sink. As Dusk was indeed of wearing it around her neck, thankfully it was the one she found at the Autumn Fest, not the one Bridget gave her. Foran hoped that it would at least slow down whatever the witch's plan was. Now once, you're, once you place your palms on the ground for the moment, lift them up and let your hands join against the next person next to you. Nia said in a calming voice. The relaxed Nia had used Foran made Foran so far less calm as she knew it was going to be a charade. Foran joined hands with Luna. Luna with Dusk, Dusk with Bridget, Bridget with Nia, Nia with Sam, Sam with Gus, and finally Gus with Foran. I don't remember from this calming ritual being in the car, Dusk said. Shit, Dusk was right. It was a very different ritual than they had done as they embarked on the tour. Did she need to step in and say something now? What was the most terrifying is that Foran, Foran is if she stepped in. She had no idea what they would do. That's because they were in the car then, silly, Bridget said in the cute voice. Anyway, I'm going to say a few words. Dusk, do you have the necklace I gave you? It's in the hotel room. I'm wearing the one I found at the Autumn Fest, Dusk responded. That should still work, Bridget assured. Now, Dusk, focus all your energy around the necklace and we'll allow your positivity to transfer over to Luna to fill her up with confidence you have. Now to help with the energy transfer, I want you to visualize a woman with long brown hair. I mean, I don't think I can magically give someone confidence, Dusk skeptically said. I'll just do it for you, Luna. The necklace four knew something was seriously wrong now. Now, not nothing that she'd been reading about common rituals in her wicked books said anything about taking energy from other people. It was all it was just energy from the earth. She had to say something now. Don't do it, Dusk, Foran cried out. Bridget's jaw dropped. What do you mean, don't do it? Dusk looked at Foran as if she, she was crazy. It's not just a ritual, Foran shouted. She honestly couldn't think of what else to say at this point. She felt that she barely had a chance of suggesting a stupid, simple plan. But all she could think of do is to say, Run! We have to run! What is your plan? Bridget snarled, wrapping her arms around Dusk. Lame! What the hell are you doing? Dusk looked obviously confused. Bridget moved her hands from around them, around Dusk's body towards her neck. All right, here's what's going to happen. Bridget's tone became more manic. Her facial expression turned more of psychotic looking. Everybody's going to do whatever I say, or I'm going to snap this bitch's neck right in front of you. What's going on, Bridget? Dusk panicked, physically struggling a bit. Form wanted to say something, but when she was terrified to do anything... She knew that her friend would be killed. Go ahead, it doesn't matter. Tell her. I'm interested to hear what your thought and plan is, Bridget challenged Foran. They're evil witches, Dusk. They've been manipulating the charts to make us famous for months now, and none of this fame is real. They just made it happen. What? Dusk shrieked. You mean you really thought your little dream of becoming famous in a band was coming true? You're becoming famous for no real reason, then... It ever when it came up after you guys met Luna at that stupid band camp, Camp Rock or whatever the hell it's called? Bridget taunted. Isn't that just a movie? Luna interjected. This isn't a common ritual. It's some sort of trick to lull Luna into becoming calm so she doesn't quit the band. Foreign explained, gasping for air. She was so afraid that she felt like she could barely breathe anymore. You really think I'm going to do this so Luna doesn't leave the band? Bridget cackled. What I have planned is so much bigger than that. What is this? A sacrifice? Foran then fought back to what Luna had guessed it would happen. Which she indeed intentionally it did not take seriously as a possibility. I mean, I suppose you could think of it that way. Sam interjected. There's no harm in telling them, Sam. They have to do what I want now. Or I'll murder Dusk. Bridget's voice tone became much higher Sounded as if she was talking to a puppy. To think that I would have complete control of a human life. All I have to do is just squeeze a little tighter, and then the poor thing won't be able to breathe anymore. Bridget must have been tightening her grip on Dusk's neck as the blonde began choking and gasping for air. It makes me pretty empowered, you know. Whether Dusk lives or dies, it's in completely in my control. Bridget laughed manically. <laughs> what the hell do you want? Foreign screamed. 
worried that the hag could kill Dusk at any moment. All what I want is simple. Bridget smiled. Do you remember Bridget's first necklace she gave you? He asked. Who did she say you gave it to her? Fornette paused for a moment, trying to remember. Luna spoke up when the memory came back to Forn. Her mother? Luna's uncertainty stated. Exactly, Bridget confirmed. The necklace is the key to get back what I've been wanting for as a little girl, resurrecting my mother and sister.